songwriting, when you're, you know, writing with, with other people, um, or you're in the studio recording, and a musician you brought in starts, like, making suggestions, like, you know, I, I don't know about that C chord. Let's try to, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you've got these people participating in the songwriting process. Um, you know, I don't like that lyric. Let's change it to this and this. How about this, you know? That doesn't rhyme very well. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you've got people coming in and they're involved in the songwriting process. Uh, and so, you know, the, the percentages, you know, can change from song to song. If, I mean, if you've got a coherent, if you've got a band, and I keep, you know, coming back to this, but, you know, in, in Blotto we had, you know, Broadway Blotto, like, came up with most of the ideas. Uh, came up with, sometimes he would bring in songs that would be finished and, and nothing more had, sometimes he would come in with an idea and we'd all participate. But we just came up with this one size fits all, you know, he will get 50% of the songwriting uh, for, every, for every song and the rest of the band will split the other 50%. And that way everybody knows what they're getting and everybody can just concentrate on making it the best song they can make. You know, I've had groups come in and say, okay, well, you know, these different songs, you know, this on this one, Bill had, you know, 30% and Christine had 10% and, you know, and, and, it, and it breaks down from song to song. That's one way of, of doing it, but what, what happens with that is once you have a hit, all of a sudden everybody's decided that their idea is the best idea ever because it's going to bump up their, their songwriting percentage on on the song. I mean, it, it, it can be done if you've got people being rational. Um, but, you know, when, when the song is being recorded, just make a, a memorandum that everybody signs uh, writing what, what, the, uh, what the percentages are. Everybody, you know, will, will agree, um, you know, and, and just, you know, write it down because uh, if the song is a hit, you know, uh, the percentages become very important. And, and it's not always, you know, it's not always necessarily one size fits all, especially when you've got a group of people, you know, floating in and out of the process. Um, and, and so, you know, write that down. A lot of times producers uh, demand a piece of the songwriting um, and a lot of, and, that, and that's happening increasingly now because there's just not that much money floating around from the sale of, of the music. The publishing money becomes increasingly important and uh, you know, and and that's all just a matter of negotiation. Um, but you know, when when the song is going down, when the song is being recorded, um, that's and it's and it fresh in everybody's mind, uh, who's contributed what. Um, that's the time to nail down uh, the songwriting splits. I've even seen apps. Uh, I think there's apps you can get on the Apple Store that just have you know, you could just go in and put in the name of the song. And put in the songwriting splits um, and and save it and it's and it's that simple, um, but get that down. Um, songwriters want to join a what's called the um, uh, the the PRO Performance Rights Organization, um, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC uh, are the three. CSAC, I think you've got to be invited. Uh, people ask me what's better, ASCAP or BMI. My answer is they both kind of suck, but you know, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not even sure. It used to be ASCAP was free and BMI you had to pay. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Um, but you have to join. Uh, you know, one one. You don't have to rush out and do it as soon as you you release your your record. But this pays royalties for public performances pays royalties to the songwriters for public performances of the songs. We're talking radio, uh, we're talking, you know, internet play, we're talking, um, you know, when, when a song is played in, in a bar in Cafe Lena, you know, um, hypothetically, um, these organizations track that and attach a, 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 attach a monetary value to it. Um, so, you know, if your music isn't getting played on that level, you don't have to rush out and join ASCAP or BMI. Uh, but eventually, you know, hopefully, you, you'll have a level of success where you, uh, where you, where you can. Um, sound exchange is something that uh, a, lot of, a lot of musicians are unaware of. 
that pays royalties for digital performances of masters. It's not to the songwriters um, or the publishing companies. It's to um, it, it, it's it's to to the the people that recorded the record, to the record company uh, and to the musicians. Um, that's been around since the late '90s. Um, they pay out millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, and it has to do with digital transmission, so satellite, uh, uh, radio, uh, internet radio. Uh, my band, because we have a 40-year-old song that gets played on all these stations on Sirius, um, we make as much money from Sound Exchange now as we do from ASCAP, um, just because we're getting played on these on these big platforms, um, and because it's digital. Uh, with ASCAP and BMI, sometimes they have to they have algorithms where they try to estimate you know, who's getting played where and how much, and they do sampling of, uh, of, of radio and of, of, of different media. Um, sound exchange is exact. They know exactly how many plays you got and where because it's all, um, it, it's all digital. Um, and if you've had recordings out and you've never, um, you've never joined sound exchange, which is a very easy thing to do, it's just you sign up, um, they may be holding money for you if you've had recordings out. And they have a list of, you know, this, this is who we're holding money for. I know if this is you, come get your money. Um, and they're great. Um, and the sound exchange people, I think, are the people that are going to be taking over um, Harry Fox, Harry Fox's job through the Millennium Music Act that I, I mentioned before. Um, and so when people are covering your songs, there's going to be a centralized, easy, and hopefully inexpensive, Harry Fox has gotten really expensive in the last few years, um, a place to go get a license. Um, that's important to know. All this stuff I said about sampling, and people can say no, and there's, you know, and they can charge you whatever you want. If they do, if they cover your entire song, and don't do violence to it, don't change um, the, the structure of the song, or don't change the lyrics, uh, they get a compulsory license for that. It's called a mechanical license, uh, and by law, they're entitled. You know, you just go to Harry Fox and you, uh, or Song File, I think is the name of the website, and you can get a click-through uh, license. Uh, and the license is uh, 9.1 cent for every um, copy delivered. Um, how that works with in a streaming environment? They are claiming to pay mechanical royalties through streaming, uh, which is weird because there's no physical copy uh, anymore, but there's some, and I've had people explain to me how it's calculated, and I don't know, just it does exist. If somebody co covers, you know, your song and it winds up on Spotify, um, you know, you'll, you'll get, the, the songwriters will get some money from that. Um, you know, and these days, you know, digital is, is the game, I mean, I, you know, a lot of groups aren't even making CDs anymore. They might make vinyl, uh, you know, for for the bling happy millennials who love their you know, love love to buy vinyl and put them on shelves and then and then you know l listen to the MP3 on. Um, but um, but CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKid. I mean, they're all good. I mean, uh, uh, my band has been on CD Baby since like 2004, and it's. Um, Probably not uh, economically. Probably not not the best since um, you, you, you know you pay them eight percent of what you make in perpetuity. Uh, TuneCore and I think DistroKid is a one-time charge. Um, and and you know if, if if they'd been around when when we first signed up with CD Baby, we probably wouldn't have signed up with CD Baby. But they're they're very efficient and they seed as as you probably know all of the major digital platforms and you upload the stuff once and and it you know off it goes and you know you give them your bank account and they wire money uh hopefully um you know once or twice once or twice a month what's really interesting it used to be when it was just the itunes store it was like okay well we sold this many downloads and you get 60 cents per download and you're going oh that's good i, I understand that and now it's like google locker one cent from norway you know, Deezer, you know, two cents from Ethiopia. And I'm like, whoa, you know, what does that mean? I, Deezer in Ethiopia, Google Locker, Amazon, this. I mean, we get these monthly, these like long 
goofy statements with, and it's all like one cent, two cent, three cents for this and that. I have no idea what the hell's going on. I mean, you know, then at the end of the year, you know, it's like, well, look at what you're doing. And, you know, we're going, well, you know, uh, you know, our listenership uh, increased 300% in Turkey. And I'm like, wow, look at that. And I dug in a little bit, and instead of one person listening, there were three in Turkey. <laughs> um, I mean, you can get, you can get lost in the, in the analytics, and it, it's, actually, it's actually kind of fun. Um, it, whether it means anything or not, I, I really don't know. 